right, the radiator's back in. We're back to where we started. Before we install the bumper, I gotta get the old bumper brackets off. So, whoever uh, removed the bumper previously was not able to undo these rusty bolts. And so they just hacksawed the old bumper off. And I'm even less able to get these rusty bolts off. So I gotta cut through them. And you can see that bracket there. And uh, I'll clean up this surface a little bit. Might spray paint with some, uh, some rust protectant paint. This is my fancy new bumper that I got. I think it came off of a, a 64. Um, anyway, bought this from a guy online, and it's a wraparound bumper, and it also has a drop for the trailer hitch. Um, that's a little tiny ball. I'm not really sure what that's for, but um, that's where the normal two-inch ball would go. So we're going to get this installed. And there we go. Look at that. I'll mount it up on there. Looks pretty good. I'll tighten down. It's pretty low even with it on the jacks. Let's talk ideal ball height. So this ball is set up almost perfectly for my boat trailer. And the center of the ball Looks like 15 and a half with the shelf at 13.75. We can assume a quarter inch when I air up the airbags in this thing. So that's a 14 inch shelf and a 15.75 center of the ball. This is really low. In fact, what's our height here? What is that, about eight inches? Yeah, that's really low, which means the ball itself would be one and uh, three quarter inches above that, maybe two inches above that. If we assume two inches, it'd be 10, which means we need to raise this thing. I think ideally, 16 is perfect for my trailer. Probably want to be a little higher than that to count for sag of the springs. So let's say 17. So we need to raise this shelf seven inches. So the truck here has been lowered about six and a quarter inches. And I can know that because when you put the bed down and you measure it, it's about six and a quarter inches lower from where the factory is, factory bed height is. Um, now, anyone who knows anything about lowering C10s might say, oh, well, wait a minute, this thing must be chopped, right? It must have a C notch in it. And the truth is, no, no it is not. Your eyes do not deceive you. This is resting on the hard stop. One way we can raise the shelf is by getting rid of this down section right here. Chop this all out, bring the shelf up to the bottom of the bumper. And it looks like that would give us, uh, let's see, that would give us three and a quarter inches of lift. Another thing we could do is chop this section and actually raise this up, chop a section out of there. And you say, well, how much do you want to raise it? And it looks like the bottom of the frame here is about an inch and a half above the bottom of the bumper. So we could raise this an inch and a half and line this up with the bottom here. There you go, that's a little bit better view. It's an inch and a half there. And here, we just have to cut an inch and a half out of this section and raise it right back up. Okay, so we add up all those numbers together and um, we get a, a new ball height of 14.75 inches, which means we need to raise the truck up two and a quarter inches to get our target 17 inch height, which means we go from a six and a half inch drop 
to a four inch drop. And you can buy four inch drop springs, which work with the stock chassis that don't require a C notch. So that seems like a perfect way to go about this without having to modify the frame. These mirrors are so bad. If there was a mountain behind me, I don't think I'd see it. Let's fix that. All right, time for a radiator update. And the big update here is we're gonna try again with the shitty Chinese Alley Works. Now you might remember that the Alley Works did not have the mounting flanges in here that uh, the original radiator do. And it turns out a big reason for that is because not every single radiator had those mounting flanges. This was the standard way to do it for the Chevy Straight Sixes. However, for the V8s, they had this contraption which mounted right here. And we have those mounting holes. On the bottom, they used this. And it mounted to, well, a cross member that I don't appear to have on this truck. So, I went and searched online, and I found this. This is by far the nicest thing I or any past owner has bought for this truck. This is uh, bought from a company that makes drag racing frame equipment, and uh, it has all the mounts we need. And to support this, and it'll probably increase the rigidity of the frame tenfold just by installing it. Uh, it's so nice, I would wager it deserves to be powder coated. Anyway, let's install it. Okay, the old radiator is removed. I guess you guys have seen that part before, so no need to record it again. Now I need to get this bar. And brace out of there. Looking at it underneath, so this has like a U-bolt going around it and holding it in place. This doesn't look factory to me. This is a little weird. It almost looks like a drive shaft or maybe a steering shaft that somebody just bolted on here to brace it. Maybe somebody removed the original brace at one point. Let me know in the comments down below what do you guys think uh, this is. Is this standard? Yeah, that right there is definitely the original bolt for the cross member. Not on that side. And this is my new bolt, which looks like I need to drill out these holes anyway. You know, of course this would be difficult to remove. Why on earth would this be easy? Okay, finally got it out. Only took me 45 minutes. All right, so let me show you where I'm at here. So I cut out some of this stuff so I could move this in and try to wedge it. Um, but I just cannot 
So if I move that all the way in, this just does not clear. It's also hitting right there. Um, I think this was designed for this entire front body. Pretty much everything but the chassis has to be removed to install this properly in its original form. So rather than continue to cut up the truck, I'm going to start chopping this piece more than I already have. Well, on today's episode of 10 minute tasks that turned into three hour side quests, I got it installed. Woo! -hoo! About freaking time. Good news. It actually fits. Woohoo! And this lines up vertically. The only just one little problem, however, to get these bolts lined up, I gotta push this fan or the whole radiator out a little more, and the fan hits the engine. Fuck. So I might have to remove this shroud. Yeah, that's adding quite a bit of distance there. So I'm probably just gonna remove the shroud. All right, I got the radiator mounted. I uh, ran out of zip ties, so I'm gonna wait to mount the radiator until I get more. So there's the sensor for the fan, and because I don't really trust the Chinese sensor, I have an actual gauge on here so I can see how hot it is. So it should kick on at 180 degrees, so it wouldn't even have kicked on at this temperature, but it's nice and warm. Water is pumping through here. All right, I got the fan in, all wired up. So time to see if this actually works. Now one uh, problem with putting uh, this here is that it waits for the thermostat. You don't actually know what the temperature of the engine is until the thermostat starts to open and then you get the hot water touching the sensor, which I guess is better for the fan, but it just means I can't see what the actual temperature is. All right, the fan just kicked on. It's like 170 degrees. So good, we should be able to drive now. Is it cooling? It's hard to tell. All right, I think we're dragging the brakes. This is gonna be a shitty one, but. All right, here's the deal. Uh, broke down right in front of a hot tub store, and the lady at the hot tub store said, Hey, do you want to borrow my truck? So you can go pick up starter fluid. Uh, so here I am, and um, returning to the hot tub store. Alright, bye. Alright, dead on the side of the road. 
we've been here before no gas no fuel so did we blow another fuel pump or are we out of gas I think we might be out of gas because I don't hear much going on in there okay so why refuel on this thing look what I found what the fuck why did this pop out truck is running so uh, we just ran out of gas I guess I should get this fixed uh, or see if I can get that working back to it okay it only took 7.5 gallons to completely fill it up and I put five gallons almost five exactly from the uh, the jug so that's 12 and a half gallons before it's empty so we maybe we need to adjust the fill fuel pickup in the tank as well and bend it down because this should be a 20 gallon tank okay ready 